And we're glad. <laughs> Look at that face. It's podcast oh, time. It's podcast time. His favorite. It's his favorite time of the week. Favorite time of the week. Michigan's retirement coach. Look at that cheesy smile. No just time can't. constraints, well, just talk and finance. If you're not watching this video on YouTube, if you're listening on Apple or Spotify or whatever, you should you should surf on over to our YouTube channel sometime just to see the happiness that covers the face of one Mike Douglas when it's podcast time. It's favorite and when you're time there, week. hit the subscribe button. Hit that like, subscribe button. Comment, share with your friends. Be <sighs> part of the community of people getting educated and having fun talking about education, finance. getting coached, getting on schooled. The pod. On the pod. Lots of uh, questions that people have. Yeah. Circumstances to be situated when it comes to figuring out our money. Because, listen, hopefully it's going to be 20, 30 years of of a happy retirement. So we got to make sure that you got that income plan in place, got a tax plan in place, got a risk strategy in place. All these things Mike and his team can help you figure out. You can start the conversation as soon as right now. Michigansretirementcoach.com is where to do that. We also have links posted in the show notes. And as Mike was saying, don't forget, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Search Michigan's Retirement Coach on YouTube, and you can find us there. So, everybody's all a hubbub over the big rate cut that happened because everybody yeah. thought it was going to be twenty-five bips. Is that what the cool yeah. kids say? The bips. Yeah. yeah. Bips. But in fact, it was bipping. fifty bips. Twenty-five bips. Fifty bips. I don't even know what it all means, really. I just know 0.25%. that two five percent. Yeah, interest rate uh, yeah. is coming down, so, which is great if you bought a house in the last few years and you want to lower your mortgage or you need to buy a car or, you know, all the things as far as int- as far as loans, great news. But when it comes to, again, thinking about our savings, thinking about our investments, the idea of what the Fed is doing, creating a balancing act, talk about more cuts coming through the next months, the next come- upcoming months and years. Morgan Stanley's Jim Karen was on CNBC sharing his thoughts on what to expect and what may be. Here's what he said. So if we think about this as an insurance cut, I think that's the right way to phrase this. So effectively, the Fed is taking a risk. And the risk is is that if they go too fast right now, if they cut rates too quickly, they may increase inflation. But on the other side of that, the risk is is that if they don't cut quickly enough soon enough, then they risk a deterioration and potentially a recession in the economy and a rise in the unemployment rate. I mean, so I feel like he said a whole lot of nothing. It's like, well, maybe (laughs) seems to be the name of the game. Eh, We'll see. Still people wondering how it could affect their savings and also looking for opportunities. We still have to grow our money even on our retirement years. So in the stock market during this rate cutting cycle, despite risks that there might be, what opportunities are there for us? What are you recommending to folks? So understand a couple things. <clears throat> First of all, the Fed's job is to keep the economy within like an appropriate channel. Okay. Right. So if this is a bad economy and this is yeah. a good economy, yep. they want to try and keep us right in this channel because they know that if the market's going up 20, 25, 30% year after year, that's yeah. unsustainable growth. And it actually leads to over hiring and then eventually a firing okay. um, or a right sizing. Um, so what they do is if the market's going crazy, they raise interest rates to slow the economy in a typical market. So it, there's a lot of people who think they should have raised rates back in like 2019. Um, and they were supposed to do it in 2020, but then COVID hit and they couldn't yeah. do it. Yeah. So if the, if the market's going really, really well, economy is going really, really well, they want to actually temper it down a little bit to a sustainable yeah. growth rate. So if the market's doing eight to 10% a year, that's great. The economy is growing. They look at GDP as a heavy indicator. They want certain good metrics to stay stable, not explosively fast. Um, on the other hand, if the market's going really poorly, think like the 2007, eight, nine financial crisis, we went through a major crash. They lower rates to try and stimulate the economy back up. So that's their job is to kind of spoil either party, a bad party or a good party. They try to bring it back in the channel. So when they raise monetary, when they raise rates, they tighten monetary policy. What they do is they're trying to uh, temper down a fast growing market. So they did that back in 2023 to try and deal with the inflation rates, because oftentimes inflation follows fast growing markets. Markets go out of control fast. And as a result, people have more money to spend and things like real estate get into pricing wars where people run up the price on things. So there's a lot of things there. Also, when there's an increase in the monetary supply, when we print a lot of money, it also tends to lead towards inflation. Um, But so what they do is they're trying to 
They raise rates to slow that all down. Well, as a result, when you raise rates and you slow the economy down, you do increase the unemployment rate. And unfortunately, there's a happy number that we need to have of unemployment because Mm -hmm. it it keeps pricing of workers down. If everybody's gainfully employed, which is going to sound really cold, but if everybody's gainfully employed and you have to pay higher rates, higher wages to to steal an employee, it drives the price of the goods you're buying up, right? Yeah. It's a so, checks and balances act as with everything else in life. That's all it is. Yes. There's, there's a happy medium. And yeah. so if there's people who are unemployed, they'll take less money to do the same job than someone who's mm-hmm. already employed has to be stolen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So as a result, that's kind of the model. So the expectation was they raised rates for so long, they slowed inflation, they s- raised unemployment, and they were supposed to kind of bring real estate to a slow, um, even car purchases to a slow to yeah. bring, uh, wage increases to a slow or a stall or even a hopeful a, a come down. When that happens, what they typically would do is very slowly decrease rates. 25 bips or basis points, 0.25% is the typical model because yeah. they raise by 0.25 over and over and over again. And then yeah. the problem is, so like right now, there's a lot of people who still want to buy houses and yeah. they're at that point of like, oh, but rates are so high. I don't know. Mm-hmm. And mortgages right now are at like that six and a half percent rate for yeah. most people, maybe seven if you have a slightly lower credit score, mm-hmm. but that's the rate. And so it, pricing, pricing uh, housing prices have stayed pretty high. Like they haven't dropped dramatically. That's the I thing know, is just, the inventory is still so low. Yeah. yeah, the inventory is low. So now certain bands of real estate are more out of control. Like there's no inventory for houses that are like two to $400,000. There's right. none. Mm-hmm. Um if you if you're trying to buy a house that's like six hundred thousand to a million, there's more. And obviously, okay. if you go higher than that, there's more because there's just less sure. people willing to pay that. And yeah. interest really kicks your butt on a two million dollar house versus a two hundred thousand yeah. dollar house. Yeah, yeah. Um, but when you look at that, so if they if they lower rates too quickly, well, then what's going to happen is as soon as they lower rates, people go back into a feeding frenzy and they buy more things at that higher rate, and it will push real estate prices uh, back up. So when they expected a quarter point drop, and that's what kind of the market tends to price these things in, and then the Fed came out and said, we're going to actually going to cut by 50 basis points or a half percent. Uh, it leads economists to ask a couple questions. Why would you drop an extra quarter point when you don't need to? Why would you do it? They're not, full, they're not being like altruistic, right? Like they're not like, you know what? We just want to be generous because it's not a decision like that for them. It's an economic decision. Mm-hmm. So remember, the reason that they lower rates is to stimulate the economy. Right. That's what the rule is, right? They raise right. rates to slow it. They lower rates to stimulate it. Why would they lower rates by more than needed? Well, to most, that's an economic indicator that they feel that we are pushing towards borderline recession. Okay. They are trying to keep us out of bad waters. Because if okay. they just lowered a quarter of a point, we'd say, okay, they think everything's good and they're trying to bring them back down to a normal number. Okay. And they could, cause they can always do another quarter point in right. a month or two. In a month. Yeah. They don't have to. It's not like they say, well, here's my annual move. So I got to make a move for the next year. They could do a quarter point this month, quarter point next month, quarter point. Like they could do it as often as they want. Mm-hmm. They have scheduled meetings and they can call whatever meetings they want. But why would they drop it by a half of a, a yeah. percent or uh, 50 basis points? Most people believe that it's to keep us out of a recession. Again, okay. most economists. There's a couple stats we need to know. Number one, Whenever there's a monetary tightening policy, raising rates, mm-hmm. the, there's a longstanding rule that 10 quarters, 10, you know, three month periods after that happens is typically the start of a recession. Okay. So 10 quarters from the first time they raised rates back in, um, 20, 20, uh, late 22 Eight, into 20. 23. Okay. okay. So that would actually begin the 10th quarter is October 1st of this year. Really? Yeah. Dang. Okay. So that would be timeline wise when a recession mm-hmm. would start. Number two, uh, when you have drastic growth, mm-hmm. um, there's a, there's a couple you know podcasts and people I follow that are, are big business, like really, really huge, like they top execs at Google, at um, major venture capitalist guys, and they were talk they talk a lot about how when you're in a growth period, you over hire. Right. If you're growing, right. you you hire a ton of salespeople, a ton of engineers, a ton of developers, all these people because you're growing and you actually have to hire for the sales you haven't even brought in yet. That's kind of their model. They bring in all this venture capital and they hire big. And then once they come out of a growth cycle, they do what's called right sizing. 
And right sizing is a way of saying laying people off because they no longer in a growth cycle. They don't need those exploratory sales. They don't need exploratory development. Right and they sizing. right size back Friendly to term. where they're yeah. It's it's where they they right size the company back to yeah. what the balance sheet and the cash flows should be. So you have financial statements that tell you how many people you should have. And then in your growth model, you say, I know what that says, but we're growing. So we're just going to throw more money at growth positions, going to mm -hmm. develop new things, more salespeople, more represented, all that. Mm -hmm. um, and then as soon as things pull back, you right size. So think about what these major companies are looking at. Intel, we saw back in, I believe it was June or July, announced they're laying off 15,000 employees. Yeah. Right. That's right sizing. Now it sounds like Facebook, uh, Meta laid yeah, off, Meta. I think it was 10 mm -hmm. or 15,000 people last year seeing a lot of these growth companies right size. Why? Because yeah. they know the trends of these things. And they know that when you go through an economic downturn, a recession or whatever it is, and again, recession always sounds terrible. It's a good reset of the economy, even though it's another, it sucks It's like people. another checks and balances thing. It's just yeah. part of economics. The rubber band, yeah. it's, like, it's like when you stretch a rubber band as far as it can stretch and it's about to snap. And then you go and you relieve mm -hmm. the stress, right? Well, now it can stretch further the next time you go but you have to relieve the stress. So ironically, the best thing for that rubber band is not to stretch it further, it's right. to let it compress. And but then you can stretch it further. But the, the problem is for people that you work with, yeah, a la people that are leaving their jobs, no longer have that income from their employer, now have to make income out of their portfolio. The recession hits, they're taking a hit on their portfolio because the market's down. Meanwhile, they're withdrawing. So it's just, it's a much more stressful circumstance for somebody who's close to or in retirement. Oh yeah. Well, especially when you're pulling, cause you're no longer getting paid, right? You've been right-sized, right -sized, you right-sized yourself, right? You stepped out mm -hmm. of, the, of the working industry and you're <laughs> retired. Um, but now you're responsible for your paycheck. Yeah. And then what's interesting is when this happens, yeah. it does it to the, it's not just the job market. It also does it to the stock market. It's yeah. short term, but typically after any rate cuts like this, especially a 50 basis point cut within uh -huh. 18 months, we should see a market correction. Okay. That's like a pretty substantial rule and not, and not like a 10% correction, 20 to 30% plus. Okay. So for those in retirement, we need to know that if they're cutting rates this drastically, we should expect a market correction inside. And this is not based on white house. This is not based on elections. Uh -huh. This is based on just economic, economic indicators history. Yeah. because the fed is supposed to be independent of that. Right. right. Um, so as a result, we should be planning for retirees. Hey, they're cutting rates. They're they're showing recession. Recession typically means, you know, it's supposed to mean two consecutive quarters of negative GDP and a 20 to 30% correction in the market. That's a bunch of nerd speak to say your portfolio is probably going to experience major volatility in the next two years. Um, volatility down and then recovery up. So okay. what do we need to do as a retiree? Well, we yeah. need to always hedge against the bad and plan for the, and hope for the good. So if the market's going to crash, we need some protective measures inside. We need some money that's either separate from the market, protected from the market, or um, provides us income regardless of the market. Then we also need money that on the way down has protective step outs where all of a sudden, you know what, I'm going, I'm going, all right, things are getting crazy. I'm going to step out of bounds so I don't get tackled and, and hit really hard. I'm mm -hmm. not going to get derailed by it. So we need some uh, almost like bumpers on a bowling alley, right? Something that just protects us. Yeah. So there's two sides. There's the money that should be giving me my income and it should not be market dependent in a crashing market. And the other side is my money that is in the market that's opportunistic. How do I make sure that that doesn't just take major, major mm -hmm. hits during mm -hmm. this? That, that is what it means to build a good retirement plan. It's separate from what a 30-year-old should mean. A 30-year-old should see an in re recession as an opportunity. Bye, 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 bye. Jim dollar Kramer. cost yeah. average. Just yeah. stay in the game, right? Yeah. I, she, yeah. If you have more money, throw more money at it. Yeah. Um, but for those in retirement and those who are no longer in the accumulation phase, but you're yeah. in the preservation and distribution phase of your life, it's about protecting everything you've worked so hard for, saving your retirement plan, saving your retirement assets and living out the life you always want to live. Just because the market goes through recession doesn't mean you shouldn't get to go golfing on a cruise or remodel the kitchen. Mm -hmm. You should still get to do the things you've always planned on doing, but we need to have plans that are prepared for the recession before it hits. You don't want to make an exit strategy in the foxhole, right? You want to make it from the comfort of a good mental place. And so before these things happen, all the indicators are there. Before it happens, these are conversations we should be having. Um, on our website, a Michigan's Retirement Coach, there's a button on there that says, Start Your Retirement Roadmap Today. 
If you go to Michigan's Retirement Coach, click that button, Start Retirement Roadmap. It'll tell us, hey, they've got questions about what we're talking about. You want to know if you're prepared for a recession, or if you're recession proof, if you're prepared, or if you're in a position that says, if things go bad, I go bad, and I don't want that anymore. Right. Click that button. It lets us know you want to have a conversation, and we chat with you to understand your situation what you want life to look like and see what that looks like in good times and bad and model that out. So you can know, Hey, you know what, if things go bad, I'm protected. If things are good, I'm opportunistic, but we just don't want the market and things we don't have control over to control us. And so that's what it means. Go to Michigan's retirement coach, uh, click that start your retirement roadmap button. And we'll gladly have that conversation. Don't forget to add the dot com after the Michigan's retirement coach. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. No, I got you. I got you. It's yeah. all good. Uh, just the idea of planning, preparation, education, knowledge is power. Don't be afraid. Take the bull by the horns. It's your money. You've worked so hard to get this nest egg to this point. Let's not let some sort of recession blow the thing up. Let's work to create some security around it. And because, listen, 20 or 30 years of retirement, this is probably not the first recession or last recession that you're going to, to see in this space. So, again, let's get to work helping you figure out how to add layers of security within your portfolio. Again, it's michigansretirementcoach.com. We also have links posted in the show notes. So you can just click there to go to the website, which is michigansretirementcoach.com.